This time it's motorcycle alternator test and replacement. So, out for a ride the other day, and the battery light came on the bike, which is not good news. Tested the battery and the battery seems okay. Um, so it may well be something to do with the generation circuit, with the charging circuit, really. So first one we'll do is we'll test that and see what we've got. So I've checked the battery with charging, it seems to be okay. So there's definitely something going wrong with the generator circuit. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the alternator. It's either going to be the alter or the regulator rectifier with the wiring in between. So we'll have a look at the alternator first. Let's get some view. Now, the spec say we've got a measure between these points. This is the main cable coming from the regulator rectifier. Can you in close enough to see that? I'm coming nice and close over that. So here's the main cables. And it's a three phase alternator, so there's three wires. Now if we measure across them, each of them, we should get a reading. It's said, get a good contact, of around between 0.4 to sort of 0.5 ohms in that, that area. Ooh, hang on, put on ohms, that would be a lot better. So put on ohms, so we'll go from those two, okay, 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is a bit high. Which means we may be short somewhere, our burnt out cable. We go across these two, to measure across these two individuals. 0.5 is within spec. Across these two, let's see what we get. 0.5. So, one's reading a bit on the outside. Another test we can do is to run the engine and see what voltage we're getting across these. It should be quite high, even at tick over, you should be looking at about 20 volts. So, we'll put it on volts and then we'll start the bike. So don't worry about the fact that the back, this was obviously stay on anyway because we've disconnected the, the alternator from the battery so that light wouldn't come on anyway. The problem is it was coming on when I was riding along wasn't it? So let's start the bike up. So we're running absolutely fine. There so we go, so it's a tick over. So if we now measure across these we should be looking we go this one, we should be looking, it's still about 20 volts. Oh dear. That's what, 6.6. Because these two, so about 11.5. Because these two, yeah. So let's try and rev the bike a bit. Come up to it. Really huge bolt as well over 20 volts. As you can see, even that one, that one's doing 11.5. It's not really doing anything. That fucks me in. So all that tends to suggest is we've got a catastrophic failure of our alternator. So it's gonna to have to come off. So the alternator lives in here. And unfortunately, oil is contained in this compartment. So we're gonna have to drain some of the oil out. So we'll drain some out from here before we do anything else. <coughs> There'll be a tin foil there just to stop it dribbling all over itself because this bike can be quite incontinent that way. Can we pull that off without losing the brass washer? There's the oil. So that's drained down a smidge, and then we'll get this compartment off and we can check the alternator out. We may find some burnt out windings. Why it should have gone at such a low mileage is a mystery. Maybe we can solve that, maybe it's something else. We shall see. So while that's doing its thing, we might as well take these screws out, to or loosen the screws off rather, so we can get the cover off. And they go all the way around the circumference compartment. I think we don't need to take the chain guard off, it looks like it runs underneath, so it should just be these all around here and they're all 8mm. Hopefully they're not too tight. And they're not. These things should be quite loosely torqued really. It's only a cover. It's not load bearing or anything like that. So there's no reason why these should be tight. But of course sometimes at the factory they're obviously putting these on with electric drivers. You know, they should be pre-torqued but they can 
be a bit tight sometimes. There we go. Well, that's all of them. Right, so I won't do all these. What I'm going to do is put the screws into basically into the same pattern they've come off. Don't know if they're all the same length. They might well be the same length, but we're not going to risk it. Could use a drill for this, but your mum's not the drill. Now that almost certainly, well, there's definitely going to be some oil that will come out. We've drained a lot of it out now, but there's always going to be some sitting in the case. Oh, see, that's longer. So it was worth doing that. I've been playing guess which hole and why. Oh, those, those two are longer, two central ones. There's a pattern, so I'll put this out of the way. Yeah, I just want to get this out of the way just in case. Save us a world of hassle later on. Let's just shove this in here loosely. It's a good idea to always screw things back where they belong. You can't lose them so much. Right. Let's take the chain guard off. Come on, come on. But it does give us leverage, doesn't it? Yeah. So, okay, so with the chain guard on, we've got better leverage. You've got hands under that. There we go. That's what we needed. So you pull the chain guard off. So, that was a pain. <laughs> hey. Well, it wasn't much fun. Right, let's wiggle this off carefully now. And hopefully preserving the gasket. It's got a magnet pulling against us. Okay, so. Oh. What the? F <laughs> that does not look right, does it? It's something, something's a bit toasty, a little bit toasty. I think it's fair to say. I think it's broken. Yeah, I think it might be right on this gazing bit. Yeah, that doesn't look good. So that's the pickup for the ignition, which I've just put the gun call over. But it doesn't matter really, because all this, all this cable, all this lot, it's in all comes off together anyway. Um, so it's all being replaced. Anywho, and obviously that's the flywheel. That's where the magic magnets are that uh, the pickup uses for the ignition sensor. But also, this is rotating inside the magnet to generate our alternating current. Hmm, you see that there? Oh, yeah. yeah, it looks damned irregular, doesn't it? I and mean, that's uh, well, there's your problem. Now. They, are, they do say that it, it could be related to the fact that because uh, we've got a few, we haven't got a lot of gubbins on this bike being powered up, you know, heated grips and we've got a USB but sometimes they can overload and it's just possible that may have happened here hmm. Damn! So here's our nice new one with cables that aren't black so I feel a little bit more optimistic. One of what we have got to check for is make sure we've got the right... It looks right, but they did change these slightly. So it might be the wrong size, which will be just about our luck. So we'll compare that to the one that's coming off before we put this one on, just to make sure... We need to take the magnet. We're not home to Mr. Cockup. No, we shouldn't need to. I mean, these things can demagnetise. Uh, I've heard of that happening very, very rarely on some Gutsies, but it's extremely rare that that sort of thing happens. But not impossible. But uh, let's uh, let's keep it simple. 
change this out. We'll compare, we'll pull this out of here and we'll compare this to the new one. So most of you get oh, that out see of if you can make it a bit now. Go on, then. Right, so pull that out of from this very impressively heavy magnet. Now, this one, I don't want to let go of this because we're flying and it does fit. Oh, that's a strong, <laughs> strong meet the ball. Yeah. So we can probably deduct this is not demagnetized, Tom, don't you think? Yes. It's a bit demagnetic. <laughs> it's very magnetic. It points right, so. Magnets are working, coil look bad. Great to make a success. Right, so what we need to do now is to change this little sucker in here. Also this pickup, change it for this entire unit here, plug it in, re-top up the oil and um, hope it fires up. So come in close Tom and we'll have a look. So we've managed not to kill gasket, which I'm quite pleased about really. So mm. that's going on that way. We'll leave it so it's face down now, like that, okay? We're going to pull these off here and this over here. So this is a pickup for the ignition. <clears throat> Might be a little bit of lock tight on these because um, they're probably not the sort of thing you want to come loose. I wouldn't have thought. Uh, no. I think that would be bad. Not so very good. No. There's one. Yeah, it's locked tight on. I'll dig some out in a minute. Now we'll wait. Okay, and there's two out. Then of course we've got the three central ones here. You've got to remember, see where the cable's running. There's a little channel just in there that this cable off the bottom here runs into. So that gives us our position of where this has got to sit. If you get it wrong, it will sit wonky. And again, bad. Yeah, locked tight on these as well. Mm. That doesn't feel very nice. Mm. Should get you doing this. Menial tasks. Mm. Yeah. This is my assistant menial task. No, I've got it. It's pretty tight though. You don't cross it putting this sucker in. Hmm. Hmm. Loosen it off. It is coming. So it's. I think they were just slightly generous with a lock tight, perhaps. They're quite long, actually, aren't they? Yes. Hmm. I'll give it a clean pull, but I'm going to clean the threads for putting them in, I think, just to. Make sure they haven't got any detritus. <laughs> so clearly, what we've got to memorise really is the route of this cable. It's going to go through the channel line, it goes underneath here and then through here. She probably should have taken a picture on the phone, <laughs> if you remember. But we're going to memorise it because what oh. could, po could possibly, we'll never forget how this goes. Yes. Not like we did on the Suzuki. Did we? Well, when we say we, I mean me, obviously. You weren't anywhere to be seen. Here we go. Here we go. There she is. There it is. Okay. And that's off. Good job. So we need that, because that's the thing that holds the cable out of the way. Just holds it down. Yeah, it just holds a cable out of the way. Yes. It stops it getting destroyed by the spinny magnet. Horribly and this, mangled. Horribly mangled. And then this should, this should just wiggle out. Which obviously means it will be a bastard to wiggle in. Hmm. That does not look good, does it? It looks, actually smells burnt. Poor little It does generally smell of burning oil. That's horrendous. And look at all the coil binders, they're all dark as well. Um, well, may alternator rest in peace. <laughs> will be remembered. For all the um, work that it caused. Right. Okay, so sit this explosion here like that. Yes! Yes! Still. Still. Oh, 
Okay, the Schwartz BB of you. It's going to go over there like that. Okay. Miserable. Right, so what we'll do, we'll get a bit of Loctite for these and we'll Loctite them back in, I think. For fear of disaster. That's going to go under there like that. Pin that down. So it doesn't get mangled horribly. Horribly mangled. Yeah. Doo -doo. We have some Loctite, which is frankly amazing because it's the kind of stuff I'm always, but always running out of. Any tiny drop. We'd, you know, I mean, who knows? Maybe back here again. Sincerely hope not. I'm just visually lining the holes up and just get them in finger tight. The mistake some people do is I'll just suddenly just tighten these suckers up as tight as they can get the first one and then you've got no wiggle room then to line up all the others. I'm also giving them all a bit of a wipe as well because they're mm, a yeah, little bit grimy. Well, yeah, the threads don't look fantastic if I'm honest. A bit of weird threads, but like taper off at the end, they get like thinner at the end. Yeah, almost like almost like some bozo cross threaded them or something. But every single one of them's like that, so. Yeah, yeah. Very, very weird. It is a bit screw. weird. To be honest. I suppose you can't get a screw like so. You probably can. Maybe yeah. it's just yeah. a, they're, they're fairly uh, sensitive. None of them going very well. I thought it was like we get like thinner rims, or is it just an optical illusion? I'm not sure. They kind of look like they do, don't they? Which, Which they makes mean? no sense. No. Again, these should really. We're not gonna, you don't over tighten one side down. Don't like the way these threads feel. They're not super tight. There's not a massive amount of resistance. Understand? So they're, they're going out. Yeah. You know, I've been happier. Okay. So you got to obviously. Wind these down fairly steadily, really. You don't do one end up and bloody warp the whole thing. Just slowly going to walk it down. It's got to sit square, obviously. They're only quite small screws, so you don't want to be massively over tightening them either, really. No. Because then they will strip, because they're just. The thing to remember about these is they're only thin screws going into aluminium. I mean, you can look up the torque settings if you like. To me, I go just, just sort of feel just tight. Sometimes with torque settings into aluminium, I tend to go a little bit below them anyway. I'd sooner they were a little bit less tight than specs say because the amount of times I've followed specs and stripped aluminium threads which is depressing to recount. Right, okay, right, so those that's sitting, it looks like it's sitting square let's have a little look at it yep. that seems, seems to be square, well soon no because the sucker won't fit if it's not square that will be the um, dead giveaway here right, so let's go go there so then we've got um, this clamp, haven't we? That goes there. Let's do, let me take my slack out the cable. It's going to go in there, clamp those suckers down. Just yeah. a hand. That's a bit of a fiddle, because obviously I've got to add these as well. So I'll just give these again a little bit of a wipe. Overly pleased with the threads on these, I'm honest. A little bit on that one, and a little bit on that one. And then we can reinstall the pickup, just like that, won't it? Does look. Yeah. I like one ignition. Electronic ignition pickup. That's a pickup. I'm just getting a few threads in just to hold it while I get the one on. You don't want to be distorting these things. So I've got to screw them in nice and even. So 
you don't tighten up one side then the other, you, you sort of go down gradually. I'm going down double snivels. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This then sits into here. Let's have a look and see it's curved there, it's curved there, so that's the surface it's gonna it's gotta go that way around. It doesn't always drop in that easy these things. Let's give it a tiny bit of encouragement. <clears throat> and hopefully it like, tightens down. <laughs> But I'll get that's that's not bad now. So that should be okay. Once you start tightening down, it should flatten out. That looks rubberized. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Back on with this little sucker. So what I've done is I think put it so it's in the engage point, so it's right back there now. Hopefully that's right. So if I don't we'll turn it over, it makes a whole grinding noise. Something like that, then that's obviously wrong. Oh, that's a cam chain, that's kind of cool. So yeah, it's a cam chain. Yeah. Looks uh, abominably shit. Right, so that's got to go into there. Obviously, we've got to. Oh, that felt good, didn't it? Yeah. Nothing we could do is just, we'll do a couple of screws up and then turn the starter motor just to make sure we've got it lined up perfectly. I think we'll do that. Yeah. Because I'm not feeling wholly confident. On the hole, because we want it to fire up, we just want it to turn without making a whole noise. Ooh. That's going in. The magnet is accepted. The coil. Uh. So, so I'm not doing these up tight. What we're going to do now, we're going to just hit the starter motor just to see if it's engaging properly. It's not going to spark because that's not connected. We don't want it to spark, there's enough oil in it anyway. We just want it to turn just gently. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's engaged. Engaged. So now to put the rest of the screws in. Time to reassemble. Tighten this back up, left the washer back on. And then we can re the oil up then. Okay, that's the drain plug back on. Chain guard back on. Yeah. 
this crap out of the way and we'll plug this sucker back in. It's basically vertical, wasn't it? Yeah. That's it. There we go. Closing up. Don't, it's one of those things you want to type, you don't want to go mad because it's only a 10 mil pin. Oh, this cable. Where are they? That plugs into there. This one stretches underneath the oil pipe here. Yeah, thusly, and it went into the one that's under the cover, didn't it? Yes. Which is, as you knew, not very accessible. Where is it now? There it is. Will you go in? Yes, you will. Huzzah, right. That's in. Right, so there's the end of the plug. Here's then we've got to put in. It's a three pin plug. And then it has a red slider. You see that? It just slides across to lock it. Can you yep. see that the red yep. slider there? So there's a, can you see, yeah, can you see yeah, in there? Yeah. So there's a groove in there that these little nubbins on there engage into. And then it should, you have to sort of shove that in, slide these along at the same time, should be like lined up properly. And it should magically flick in. Like that. What a colossal pain in the arse. What an unnecessary fiddly design that is. Mm. Right, before we tidy the cable up, we'll top the oil back up. So we're on volts, let's just check. So we're getting 12.98. Tells us at least what we already know that the battery's healthy. So we need to now start the bike off and we'll see what we get. Hopefully when it switches on that should go off. It did. Right. So that's something, let's see what we're getting. So you would think. 14.3 volts, that's normal now. And if we rev it, it goes up a little bit, not very much. So about 14 volts is what you should expect. So, so we're getting about 14 and a half volts. Didn't go much above that, which tells us the regulator rectifier seems to be working properly. And now we're getting a charge from the alternator. So hopefully, it seems to be fixed. So the next job to do really on this is going to be a major service. We're going to do the oil and tap it and things like that because it's coming up to one anyway. And we need to change that oil out. So there we go. Alternator fixed. Fingers crossed. As to why it blew, it's a mystery. Could be overloading. We've only got a socket and, ha and heated grips on it. I haven't got anything else. So it shouldn't have gone. Maybe it's a manufacturing fault. Maybe there was a short cause and all that rain in Scotland. Don't know, but fix for now. What other subjects or bikes would you like us to cover in a future video? Please let us know below. If you like that video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, thank you very much for watching.